Now to the age-old question of whether there's life on other planets. The search has inspired science fiction novelists and NASA missions alike. But could a moon of Jupiter, known as Europa, provide us with crucial information? Well, Bill Nye, the science guy, is among those who think it's worth finding out. Today I caught up with him on Capitol Hill as he pressed his case for exploration. Why is Europa, this moon of Jupiter, worth exploring? Because there's an ocean there. There's twice as much seawater on Europa as on Earth. So why do we care? Oh, because wherever there's an ocean, it looks, it, it's reasonable that there's living things, that there could be living things. And as I say, if we were to discover life on another world, like Europa, it would change this world. It would change the way everybody thinks about his or her place in the cosmos, what I like to call our place in space. So how would you go about exploring the ocean on Europa? So, just a year ago, let alone 20 years ago, people speculated, well, if we're going to do that, we'd have to have a lander. We'd have to have a spacecraft that would land on the surface, drill a hole. You'll hear people glibly throw around the term thermal drill. Sounds very expensive. Yes, yeah, right. That's right. Billions and billions of dollars. But now, uh, less than a year ago, we discovered that the gravitational action of uh, Europa's orbit with Jupiter squeezes it, keeps the water liquid, and makes it squirt through cracks in the ice into outer space. And you would throw uh, a spacecraft so that it flew through this plume of water repeatedly, and then you would analyze, like looking at the bug stuck to the windscreen. So how are you going to persuade members of Congress to build a spacecraft to go and explore that geyser? Well, what happens is everybody, explore, everybody supports space exploration at some level. Everybody thinks it's good. But our claim at the Planetary Society, where we advance space science and exploration, is that planetary science is the best value. It's what NASA does best. It's what, it's what brings out the best in people. It's yeah, where you solve on. problems. How much would it cost to build this thing? About $2 billion over a little more than 10 years, which in tax-paying terms is not very much money. It's less than uh, one fast food item once per taxpayer. And what's your bet? Do you think you're going to be able to persuade American lawmakers to fund this? Yes, we do. We believe, that's why we're here. You've got to be optimistic. And also, the time has come. Uh, we've explored Mars, not extensively, but looking for signs of water and life. But here we have water, liquid water, seawater squirting into space. Furthermore, there are the same chemicals that we find here on Earth in these extraordinary locations, like uh, these very hot geysers where there are bacteria living. And so, uh, I mean, if we were to discover life on another world, it would change everything. What kind of life do you think could potentially be there? Well, you start out with microbes, some sort of bacterium-like deal. Now, let me ask you this. Suppose we found microbes. I mean, this is science fiction stuff, but it's real. Would it have DNA? Would it be like us in that way, or would it be, if I may, a whole nother thing? Like an alien. Like, uh, yeah, it would be an alien, yeah, but uh, what sort of alien? And then when you get all science fiction wild on it, you think, well, maybe it's been under the ice for millennia and there's some sort of sea frond, you know, living. I mean, but you'll never find out if you don't explore. Bill Nye, thank you so much. Thank you.